Yes, you guys, welcome back. I'm Nini FC, this is Blue Lions TV, and today I'm here to bring you guys a match review to our massive 1 0 win against Atletico Madrid. Uh, guys, I'll be wondering, Nini, the review's coming out like next day, bro. Like, what's happening, mate? You're kind of slipping a little bit. There is some context, there is some context. Uh, you guys that are following me on Twitter probably would have seen my tweet. Um, but yeah, obviously, I had a bit of uh, an issue. But before I even explain that, I want to say thanks to everyone that was showing their love, showing their support. Honestly, it took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting to get, uh, you know, that much uh, interaction, that much, um, you know, positivity. And you know, obviously, it was a very nice read. And yeah, well, I really appreciate you guys. But um, yeah, yeah, basically, 23rd, 2 a.m., I had surgery. I uh, was rushing to A&E, you know, quite quickly. And the whole process was just kind of like one big blur. You know, I was... Just getting routine checks and it just kept escalating and escalating and escalating and um yeah in the end I had to end up getting surgery but you know you thank god nothing too major nothing too uh i'm when i mean major like the serious stuff like you, you know what it is you know what i mean nothing too mad like that and yeah of course you know i've got a few more checkups i've got a few more hospital vis uh, visits and um mainly have to rest quite a lot but unfortunately with youtube with the algorithm it's not them ones where you can just like take proper, proper time off and just come back later so i am going to still be releasing videos but i gotta let you guys know the quality won't be the same as much because i can't really be sitting down on my desk to work uh, right now everything's elevated so i'm standing up recording i'm gonna have to do that for like the next few weeks at least so um, i want to give you guys a heads up in regards to how the quality could be going on in the next few weeks as well but um but yeah even now i just literally came back from a hospital appointment to get this review out for you guys i couldn't even watch a game last night uh, i was getting ready to watch it but literally just conked out that's how tired i was and woke up the next day missing out on dinner if you guys that know me you know that i'm not Looking for any excuse to not eat. So <laughs> I need to stop going on you guys. You got like an idea behind what would happen and you know what the future of the channel is gonna be about for the next few weeks. So uh yeah, on that note, now that's out of the way, let's discuss our momental, momental, momentous win against Atletico Madrid. Now with this re review, you guys, I'm sure you've seen the game, you've seen so many other reviews. So I'm just gonna talk about some of the interesting points from the game to keep things real and yeah, Giroud, he was a very interesting uh, talking point. I mean, the goal he scored out of this world, technically perfect bicycle kick, technically perfect, the improvisational skills in that moment, because we know that Giroud, for a guy, a 6 foot, very big, very lean, you know, he does have that grace about him. Yeah, he does have that athleticism, that acrobaticness to his game. We've seen him score some sensational improvisational goals. And, you know, I felt like it was his time now this season Normally, he's scoring at least one ridiculous goal out of his season. Uh, that came against Atleti at the best time. Um, I thought this was great officiating from the VAR team. I, I know VAR gets its critiques. I know it can slow the pace of the game down. But, you know, I'm a, I've been a Chelsea fan for a very, very long time. I remember that goal goal against uh, Liverpool. Semi-final, second leg. The goal that was never a goal. It can't be classified to being a goal at all to this day. And that is something that just lives with you forever. You know what I mean? Uh, it really does. And if we had tech like VAR back then, I mean, who knows what could have happened that season? If you're potentially looking at us winning our first European title all the way back in the 0405 season. A goal like that was the key thing to separate us in a, in a game where, on a real, even though we had a lot of the possession, this was possession in a sense that Atletico Madrid were giving us in particular. I think that's why quite a few times, um, you know, we had balls out in the wide areas with Atletico Madrid wanting us to have the balls wide because they're a team that tend to focus on keeping themselves compact, keeping themselves more central, keeping that discipline in one field. Um, at the same time, you always play a slight risk when you do that because there were times where, you know, we did have some spaces open between the lines, but I don't know, maybe I let you have been studying us for a while. It does feel like, and this is one thing that Tuchel said, that we need to practice playing this way for a lot longer to build those connections, to build that orchestra in that sense, because for the possession we have, it feels like our attacking game sometimes has taken a little bit of a hit 
at times. Um, and I think normally when that happens, like games like this, it does really come down to the deciding factors and who makes that happen in the moments. Um, very tight KG game, very tight tactical affair. Atletico Madrid, we can't forget they had a little bit of their issues too. I mean, Marco Lorente has not been playing wing back all season. He's had to play there because of guys like Trippier, who he knows is going to be out for a while. Carrasco not being fit at, as a wing back too. You know, so many other issues affecting their team, as well as like a recent bout of COVID that's affected so many players in their team as well. So the fact we got a 1 0 win is massive because it is going to be like a completely different game in the second leg back at home. Unless you are going to come out to attack it is going to be more open and having this 1-0 leads this away goal is so crucial in the stage and let's hope that the team have it in them to you know continue that fight and that discipline um i want to speak about a few player performances now a few of the standouts for me i thought christensen um yeah of course we know in the back three that is really his system it does suit him a, a lot more uh his reading of the game was quite good especially when it came to Finding those runs in behinds, uh, in particular with um, you know Suarez, we know what this guy's about. And I, I thought that you know it was the composure he had at the back that really impressed me throughout the game. At times when he was getting pressed, he wasn't just looking to clear the ball blindly. You know he was looking to find someone to pass to. You know in particular playing those balls out wide to Aspie quite a lot to relieve that pressure too. And the wing back then coming to support Aspie. Did that quite a lot to beat the press right there at Madrid and that's what allowed us to get into the midfield areas so you know getting the action zones to create some danger against them so that was great to see from him let's see how he improves I love if Christensen had it in him though to play more of those passes between the lines you know to create more attacks from deep I think with his composure uh you know his reading of the game you know he's a very good reader of the game not out of position too often I feel like that could take his game to the next level but he's still 24 still quite young Let's see what's going to happen with Christensen. Um, to continue on, Lorginho and Kovacic, they were quite interesting. In a tactical sense, they get protected with the back three. With Tuchel, he understands how they move the ball. And in a sense, it all kind of works with this current tactical nature of the team. Um, a lot of times with Frank Lampard, we'd uh, criticise them for their lack of purposefulness on the ball. Uh, Lorginho in particular, Kovacic, when it comes to those vertical passes, you know, balls in the air, through balls, playing it with pace and playing it quick. You know, these are areas which they can struggle in. But with how we play under Tuchel, you know, we're a much more possession-heavy team. And in a sense, it's like Tuchel's tactics has found a way to maximise the... Uh, to bring some more efficiency to how Quover and George play. Um, let's say, for example, like there's a lot of sideways passes. Now, let's say under the previous management, that was a negative because if you've got players making runs between the lines, then you need to play the ball quickly, vertically to them to obviously find those runners. But now, because there's a, a different structure to how we play, the sideways passing does have more purpose in that sense now because it's all about trying to force the opposite, opposition team to come towards that midfield. You know what I mean? You're trapping them to come towards you centrally. And because these guys are very good at playing out from pressure, you know what I mean? Because they have a very good telepathic understanding of each other's game, which they, they clearly, clearly do. That's why they have to play together, to be honest. That's when we can evade the press more. We've seen this time and time again. And, and in a wing-back system, when you have two play, outfield players stretching the, uh, you know, the out really, really wide by the bylines, you can kind of get away with that lack of vertical passing at times. Uh, of course... In football, no game ever goes perfectly like that. There were a few times and moments where we're part of that his half that, you know, that's when our game needs to improve and go to a, a different level in that sense. Um, I think when it comes to the defending, the build-up, we're there. But that final thing we need to break teams down, that will come in more time for sure. It's all about building those understandings and those relationships. But it feels like it will take a bit of time. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this team does improve. I do feel like at times with the back uh, back three system, having that man short up front, you know, it can affect things. Um, but I don't know, to end things, to end things, I do want to talk about Tuchel. I think tactically, this was a very composed and great performance from Tuchel. Um, one thing in particular that impressed me was the subs. Uh, let's say under different management, in times like this, last 50 minutes, they've been known to maybe bring on a defender to help sharp the back line. But Tuchel didn't do that. 
This time Tuchel, we saw that substitution of uh, Kante came at the perfect time right after that goal to help keep the intensity going in the field. As Tuchel said about Kante, you know, Kante, one of the best counter pressing players in the world. Uh, when he's winning those tackles and he's like supplying the team, feeling the team, you know, we've got to do better in those situations, which I totally agree with. Uh, he then brings on players like Hakim Ziyech, Kai Havertz and Pulisic and I like that because as I said, other managers are focusing on protecting the defence, protecting the lead. But with Tuchel, it was about maintaining that intensity. It was about forcing that lady back because if you have that many attacking players on at that stage of the game, then naturally, you know, you can't afford to flood forward as much as you'd like to. We saw that it was Pulisic on the left, Havertz on the right, Ziyech as a false nine. Tuchel did mention that Ziyech could be a potential false nine option. So let's see what is going to happen in regards to how Tuchel is going to use this attack. I do feel like, yes, for us to get our results until next season, potentially remaining with the back five is the way to go. You know, about keeping that structure, that defensive integrity, and I guess in a sense, maximising a lot of the players in the team that suit that style of play. Uh, when next season comes, things are going to be different with how we play, how we approach, and it'll be interesting to see um, uh, the steps and stages and processes we're going to go through to get to those levels for next season. But you still, you look at that team, you're thinking Mason Mount, you can't really afford to not be a first-team player. hudson Adoy he brings quite a lot too. Even though I personally think as a wing-back, I know Callum's got a lot more to his game. At the same time, I know that he's like 20 years old. Most players play out of position for a season or two when they're young. I don't think that's going to affect him forever, to be honest. But of course, we spent a lot of money on attacking players. Tuchel cool himself knows that for sure. Uh, I'm just curious to see when he's going to let some of these guys off the hook a little bit and start maybe using lineups or teams against a weak opposition first. Who knows? But regardless, this was a big win against Atletico Madrid. This was a massive win, a win where shows the team have the foundations to be able to, you know, cope against the bigger teams. You know, results against Spurs, against Atleti so quickly, no matter how much better controlling the game. From our half, but stopping our opponents from counter-attacking, which is one of the key indicators to know how you're obviously, you know, stopping teams from playing. We've got a test now against Man United, but for me, Tuchel's passed it against Spurs, he's passed it against Atleti tonight. I feel like already he knows what to do, and you know, I do feel confident about the game versus Man United, you guys. But anyway, on that note, I'm gonna wrap things up, keep things moving. I know my match for you today, it's not like they normally are, but hopefully I'll get back to that place pretty soon, you guys. But I'm going to bounce and just get my ass back to bed. And in EFC, this is Blue Lines TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos.